So today I want to talk about apartment owners. So I'm helping a couple students trying to take down their most uh, their first apartment complex and a warning that I always told them was apartment owners are weird. Right? Like you would expect when you send out your letters, people who own apartments are very sophisticated, they're business oriented, very professional, very timely, they keep their word. But after you know, sending out multiple, you know, thousands of letters and talking to hundreds of owners, I come to realize that a lot of apartment owners are weird, right? A lot of them, um, they don't run their apartment complex like a business, which is why they're value add and why there's some upside potential if you can take these deals down. Um, you have to hold their hand a lot, right? Because they, they want this process to be as simple as possible. So, you know, I will draft up the contract for them. I will explain them the process. I will hold their hand, I'll answer their questions, you know, very timely and immediately if needed, right? So I, I try to make the process as easy and painless as possible for them. I will coordinate things, right? Like you said, I do the contract, uh, if they have title, um, I'll answer whatever questions they have because, you know, a lot of times they'll get stressed and have a question or get cold feet and have concerns and you have to constantly address it, right? So. It's almost like dealing with like the child, right? Um, so for me, I, like I said, I try to make it as easy as possible. That's what I coach my students to do. Like you gotta hold their hand. If they don't have a rent roll and they're not sophisticated enough to use Excel or Word to make one, then you're on the phone with them. You, I have templates in my mentorship program. Go about one by one. Unit number one, what's the rent? Unit number two, what's the rent? Unit number three, you make the rent roll with them. Right? You want to facilitate things as much as possible. If they have questions about anything, you, you respond timely. Right, You want to remove their concerns because what happens is, you know, let's just say one of my students, he, you know, they, they signed an LOI, which is a non-binding agreement. And then after the LOI is signed, we prepare the purchase and sale agreement. And a lot of states like Oklahoma, Texas, a lot of states, they have standard templates that you can find online. Like you can literally Google like Oklahoma purchase and sale agreement. They have a standard template and literally you fill it out, right? So you fill it out based on the LOI that's been signed. And then even after that, you agreed verbally, you signed the LOI, per you have the contract in front of them and then they'll get cold feet. They'll just be like, oh, you know, I need to talk to my wife or I need to talk to my spouse or I need to have my lawyer look at this. And I'm like, in my mind, I'm like, why do you want a lawyer to look at a standard contract, right? You're going to pay a lawyer 200 to $500 an hour to look at a standard contract. And of course, if you give a contract to a lawyer, they're going to make some tweaks and suggestions because that's why they're being paid. They're justifying their own job, right? But the tweak and suggestion is so minor, right? Like in the, in the grand scheme of things, right? Like it's so minor, especially for a standard contract. Like I get it. If we're drafting like a document from scratch, um, or it wasn't a standard template that's used by the Oklahoma Real Estate Commission, I get it. Like, okay, maybe we should have an attorney draft it and, and, and review it, right? And a lot of times, like, I'll have my attorney review it, and then they'll send it to their attorney, and their attorney wants to adjust it because this is how the attorneys make money, right? Attorneys make money when they tweak documents to justify more pay, to justify their time, and it delays the process. So for me personally, I hate involving attorneys. Like, when I had to do my mobile home park, it was super annoying. So in, in, in when I was selling my mobile home park in Alabama, it's a title attorney state. So ti the, a title attorney handles the escrow process, right? The title attorney handles everything. And literally, I would tell that title attorney what to do because they're not smart. I would tell them, okay, this is how I want you to phrase it. And then he would make some minor tweaks to that. And then I would review it again. If it looks good, then I would send it to the buyer's attorney and then he would take a day or two and then make a tweak or two. And then, you know, just all this delay and the only people making money is the attorneys, right? Because of course, the more tweaks they make, the more money they make. So for me, I, I try to not do that, but just know, even though myself, I don't have the attorney, they may want to have their own attorney just to feel comfortable, right? Like I, I'll explain, this is a standard contract. That's standard. All people who transact real estate in Texas and Oklahoma, whatever state, they use this contract. It's nothing new. I didn't make anything up. But if it makes you feel more comfortable, by all means, use your own attorney. They're going to make some tweaks, right? So for me, I want to do whatever it is to alleviate it, but just know that they're going to pull this card at you, right? So 
you know, I told them like apartment owners are weird. So they're going to have their attorney and then now um, they're going to go on a vacation and maybe because they're going on vacation for two weeks, they're stressed and they don't want to deal with, you know, signing a contract and doing due diligence and giving due diligence, due diligence documents. And, you know, we have to do an inspection. So they might have to be there, have their property manager there. So a lot of moving pieces, right? So I said, this is very common, you know, on the phone, on the contract, it looks good. But at at the middle of the night when they're sleeping, they wake up, they're stressed, they have doubt, second guessing. Maybe their wife says something, they're scared, you know, change is scary. So they'll start to second guess, have concerns, have more concern, ask more questions. So I just said, you know what? Okay, he said that he's going to be back in two weeks. Follow up in about two weeks and give him three days to recover from that vacation. Right? Like, let, let's give him three days to recover from that vacation. So... Follow up and just said, hey, just touching base. Like, do, do you still want to make this work? Like, what's going on? You know, I have a contract on the table. We <coughs> we have an LOI that's signed. So follow up. So at this point, it's just a matter of being tenacious, persistent, and following up and addressing any concerns that will come up. And there's always going to be a lot of concerns. So this is why it's very good to have a mentor navigate you through these things. Because I already primed them. I said, hey, these owners are weird. Right, they're gonna say something and last minute change it because a lot of real estate investors, they're not like perfect working professionals. <laughs> they're not like me, who's a pharmacist, a pharmacy director. Right, I'm very professional. I keep my word. Right, a lot of these people they invest in real estate, you know, maybe because they own a business, maybe because they didn't do good in school. So that's why they own real estate. So just know that you may think they're sophisticated, but they're not. Right, and assume accordingly. So. Any concern they bring up, address it. How do you want to address it? If it makes you feel more comfortable, have an attorney review it. That's okay, right? Or you can talk to title. If they want to talk to I, – I make them choose their title company. What title company do you trust? I don't, I don't care which title. If you trust this title company, let's use that title company. And you can ask them, hey, um, is this contract okay? And they'll say, yeah, this is a standard contract. Nothing is unusual, right? Like whatever makes them feel comfortable. They want to pay an attorney. $500, by all means, do it. So what I'm trying to say is like, it's nice to have a mentor because like I've been through this, right? Like I've bought three deals. I've talked to many owners. I've sold my mobile home park and it fell, fell through like two, three times. So I know everything that can go wrong, right? Any delay possible, any concerns possible, right? There's always a, a delay, lack of communication. It, it's like the wild, wild west, right? So this is why it's good, good to have mentorship, good to have a coach who can prime your expectations and know what to expect and also help keep you level-headed because it's it's frustrating right it's very frustrating when you're emotionally involved a lot of money is on the line you need somebody who is detached impartial it can give you clear advice to help you navigate what to expect like i already said these people are weird right you're gonna agree on everything everything's great next day they wake up they change their mind right so i already primed my student hey people are people on real estate are weird right? Myself included, probably, right? We're weird. So be prepared, right? And be able to address their concerns. And that's all it is, right? These are the soft skills. So that's why it's great to have a mentor, great to have a coach and great to have someone who's been there, done that experience that can help you navigate it, right? Even myself, if I'm buying a deal, I'd probably want a coach too for a second opinion, because I'm emotionally involved in the deal. A lot of my money's on the line. There's a lot of moving pieces, right? So that's the value of coaching. Right. That's why I had coaching and that's why I offer coaching mentorship. Right. If you're interested in joining, check out the link down below. Right. You know, I would love to help you buy your first deal. Right. That, that's that's what I do is help people buy their first deal. So anyways, kind of backtracking, you know, like the, to me, it's ridiculous. Right. <laughs> you want to pay an attorney to review a standard contract. Right. Like to me, he just wants more time. That's what I'm hearing. He just wants more time. He has too many things going on. So give him time. Let him come back from vacation. Follow up. After the follow up, if he's not really responding, say, hey, um, you're busy. Can I follow up with you another week, two weeks? And when you say that, put a reminder in your calendar and follow up. Text message, phone call, email, right? Just just, just know, be on top of mind, right? Because when they're ready, you want to be there to strike, right? You want to be there to strike. So um, just got off a call of one of my students. He mentioned this. I was like, this is great content. Like, I need to talk about this. So I just turned on the camera and decided to talk about it. So hopefully you found value from this. Hopefully this set your expectations clear as to what it's like to buy and own apartments. And you know, like I said, share this with somebody who's going through this, who wants to buy a single family home, apartment complex, 
And let me know if you have any questions down below. And if you're interested in joining my mentorship, check the link in the description down below. So hopefully you found value. Please like, comment, subscribe. Let me know if you have any questions. I hope to see you in the next one. Thank you so much.